Hi guys, we're back at Smash Fishing. We've got Sam with us today. Hello. We're going out with the hand lines and hoping for a monster. So stay tuned. Hopefully we get a giant, eh, mate? Yeah, let's hope so. Yeah, hopefully the rain holds off. It's Smash Fishing, baby. Woo! What the plan is, we're going to drop the chum bucket and both of the crab pots. And then we're going to pop off for a nice cup of tea, eh, Sam? Yeah, get some food and starving. Yeah. And then we'll be back to hopefully catch them. We have arrived at the destination. Sam's got the bait bucket there, so what we're going to do is just bait everything up. We'll give you guys a little show and get them in the water. We're fishing a giant boulder bed. As you can see, it is literally just boulders like this, massive crevices. We see a lot of lobsters here, and uh, we've seen some absolute monster congas in the past. So there we go, guys. That's one and a half mackerel in there. We're going to crush it up a little bit as well. And this is what we're putting into the crab pots. And all we got left is a load of garfish heads, full of blood, especially for the chum bucket. There you go guys, all baited up, ready to go. Hopefully we can catch them. I'm just trying to find a space in between the rocks to land it. Sam's getting ready. I reckon just down there, that's quite a flat patch there. Eh? Nice flat bit there, eh? I'll be out of the way, I think. Eh? I'll be days. Look at that. Nice. Got a nice old bucket of chum in here. Loads of uh, garfish heads that I kept from last year. Ideal bait this because it just lets off a big stink bomb. And all we do is look for the deepest part and throw her out. Beautiful. Check this out guys. I can see a massive tail inside my crab pot. Look at that. Nice size conga down there. Just going into the hole. It's about a 10 pounder, I reckon, eh, Sam? Yeah, nice one. Kicked up all the dust out of there, trying to rip the bag out. Hopefully, his big brother's there. Big old conga, just cruising through the corner there. That's a 20. That's got to be. See how wide it is around the head, eh? Just see the tail through there, guys. We're going to catch him soon. We're just giving it a minute, because often we find if we let them feed, they uh it tends to bring more out so we're hoping we can find an even bigger one as soon as we see a monster that's when all hell's gonna break loose what we've got guys is a hand line really makeshift with a bit of nylon really strong nylon really then we got a big old swivel to an 80 hook 200 pound line and a mackerel head and that's all we're doing is just dropping in between the gullies or wherever we see the congas come through hopefully we can catch that big one the tide's starting to come up a little bit at the moment, so I'm going to leave my crab pot here overnight. We're going to continue to keep dropping the hand lines and see if we can get anything. But if not, I'm coming down here tomorrow and hopefully slay the beast. Very elusive today, eh, mate? Yeah, I know. Seen them a couple of times, but they've just disappeared and they haven't come back. Yeah, some monsters around, but they're just not playing ball today. Hopefully, as that tide comes up, it might give them a bit of confidence. Sam's going to pull his crab pot up. Hopefully a lobster, but I very much doubt it. we would have seen it, eh? I think so. <laughs> Not even a lady crab. I Just goes to show. It, it must have crawled out. Yeah, we've seen some big congas and all of them are gone. So fingers crossed tomorrow's better, eh, mate? Yeah, hopefully. That water is seriously clear today. It's now the next night, guys. I've pulled up the... I've pulled up the crab pot and the whole bait band has completely been pulled out. Uh, sorry, the bait bag. It was made out of nylon uh, mesh and I put a big thick piece of nylon and tied it to the bottom and they still snapped it. <laughs> so yeah, the crab pot didn't do that well, but we got some fresh, we got loads of fresh bait and this has been chumming overnight. So hopefully it's drawn the big ones in and kept them in the area. So I'm going to cut up some bait, get it in the water and hopefully we can show you some fish. A lot of my chum still had a lot of blood and stuff in it. So what I'm going to do is just cut up a couple of mackerel, a couple of fresh ones for now. And then I'm going to start chumming it up. I've crushed everything up now. It's literally going to set off a giant stink bomb. And that's exactly what I need. Because that will draw them in and hopefully we can catch them today. I'm not going to waste too much time with the underwater camera. I am literally here to try and catch them today. Oh, they lost a piece of fish. Got to get a big old chum slick on the go. It's almost like I'm shark fishing from the shore. <laughs> you see the amount of oil that comes out of this stuff. It's amazing. 
mackerel is so oily and garfish makes great chum for this because fresh bait is key when you're doing this to attract congas the fresh bait definitely brings them in a lot faster I've just seen a big conga head come out of this hole here guys so what I'm going to do is just plop my line down and hopefully we can tempt him out that like a good one that it's about a I'd say a good 15 to 18 pound, nice size eel. That'd be a great catch and cook sort of size. But yesterday we seen one about 20 pounds, so hopefully there's some biggers around. There's a big one down here, guys. I don't know if you can see his head just there. He's coming up. Oh, he's going underneath that boulder. That is a big conga. That's a lovely conga. That could be bigger than yesterday's. So I hope you can see that. There's a massive dark shadow just in the middle of this crack here. What a beast. I'm hoping he can smell my mackerel. So I'm right above him and what I want to do is bring him high and as soon as I hook him I want to uh, drag him straight out because I don't want him to hit his head on the side of the rocks or anything. He's coming up guys. His head's just here. He can smell the bait. Oh he's just got shy. Come on. He knows it's there. He's just sniffing around the hole at the moment. Come on, oh, I'm excited. This gets your blood going, seeing the congas coming up like this. This is a nice eel as well. He can smell the bait, he just can't find it. As we've said in the past, congas are very much scent driven. They're not so much scared of the lights and stuff. If they're scent in the water, they will come and eat it. Oh, I'm rattling. This is a decent eel. He's coming up. He's coming up. He smells it. Come on. I hope you can see his head coming up, guys. Come on. Here he comes. He's smelling the water. Here he comes. Big conga. That's a big old boy. I'm going to have to hook him quickly and then bring him up. Come on, here he comes. He can smell it. Look at the size of that head. That's a decent eel. Come on, big boy. He can smell it. Look at that, that's a beast. Come on, save your head. That's a 20 pounder, that's gotta be. Here he comes. Come on, big boy. Come on, he's going down, no. He knows it's here, but he just can't find it. Here he comes. He's on the scent. Oh, you can smell it, you can smell it. He's gonna eat it, guys. Yeah, look at him eating it. Oh, oh, he's eating it. Here we go. Come on. Oh, he's off. He got the bait. No. Look at that. He's still down there, just sitting there. He's got the bait. No, that was a big 20 pounder. Got it. Oh, let's get another bait on, guys. I'm rattling. Look at that. He's back for round two. He wants another snack. Here he comes. Come on, big boy. We got to let him eat it this time. Here he comes. He's going for it. His head's out the board. Oh, come on. Going for it. It's right next to you, chap. Right next to you, chap. Come on. Here we go. He's gonna eat it. Yeah, he's eating it, guys. Got him. Got him. Ah, big boy. Oh, he's off. No. No. Oh, no, he's off. Oh, that was a big boy. Got it. Has he got it again? Nope. That's a big conger. I really want to catch him. God, he sent me through the wall, this thing. Hopefully he eats again. He looks hungry, so we will see. He looks interested. Come on. 
I hope you can see him down there, just a massive dark shadow. This time I'm going to wait for his mouth to close and then we're going to slowly pull into him and see if it will, see if it will hook him. He's right in the chum bucket at the moment. There's another conga behind me down this hole. They are everywhere. This thing is huge. Oh, he's turning around. He's turning around. I hope you can see him. Look at that. Huge eel. He's just gone over my line. Oh, I'm rattling. Look at the size of that. That's huge. That's the biggest eel I've ever seen here. Full stop. That's a proper monster. Don't swim away. He's swimming away. Look at the size of that. Oh, I am shaking, guys. That is the biggest eel I've ever seen here. That is huge. God, if I can catch that. Oh, you can still see him swimming around. There's a mammoth here, guys. This isn't the same one, but it's big. I see him just swimming past there. I'm hoping he backs up. Come on. Oh, he's swimming off. Got it. He's got a big scar on his head, this one. That was awesome. It's now night number three, guys. Ah, oh, this is the last night I can do this because you can only do it on certain tides and certain times of the tide as well. So this is the last night and hopefully we can do it. We left the chum out again. This is the third night. Come on, hopefully we can get it this time. There's one monster down there and I can't get it out of my head. Let's go get him. I've got another little sneaky contraption with me today. I've got this little cage here. What I'm gonna do is put loads of the guts and the head in this. And what the idea is, a lot of congas were coming through the holes last night and while I was on other parts. So what I'm hoping is if I keep this down there, they can't nick the bait and it will keep them in the hole and hopefully I can pull them out. Just another added bit of scent as well, but this one will go right through the rock. So fingers crossed it works. There's a conga down here already, guys. I'm hoping he can pick up my bait. I've just put it down near his head. I'm hoping he gets it. Come on. I've only been down here five minutes, so the chum obviously kept him in line. Is he on there? Nope. He's next to it, though. He's a nice one. He's got to be a good 20-pounder. He's coming towards the bait. Come on. Here he goes. Here he goes. Come on. I'm going to let him eat it. Come on. Oh, he's on it. He's on it. Has he got it? I think he's got it. Got him. I got him, guys. Big one. Big conga. Oh, look at the size of this beast. Oh, look at that one, guys. Woo, that was bigger than I thought, that one. Hell yeah. Look at the size of that. That's, that's a beast. Hell yeah. Been here five minutes and we caught one already, baby! <laughs> I'll get the camera set up, guys. This is a monster. Look at the size of that. That is a beauty of an eel. That's got to be 25, 30 pound, that one. All day long. It's a beautiful fish. So what I'm going to do is uh, I need to settle down quick. You can see how thick it is compared to my hand. It's a monster. So yeah, I'm going to settle this down, let him tire himself out. And what we're going to do is get the camera off, I'll give you a proper show, because this is a clonker. Finally got the big boy, I've seen, I've seen a couple more around as well. This is a big old, this is a big old girl, this one. Oh, got to try and keep hold of it, that's the thing. There we go guys, look at that for an eel. That is an absolute chunk of a conger eel. Best part of 30 pound, that one. Gotta be. The head on it is so thick. It's a proper monster. I'll just turn my light off. God. He's hooked per. Well, she's hooked perfectly as well. Check that out. What an absolute beast of a conga. That's for every part of 25 to 30 pound all day long. And on a hand line as well. What a beast. Full of life. So I'm not going to take any longer. I'm going to get my disgorger and release this. So it'd be good. Uh, this one's definitely a good breeder for the future. But that there is what you call a slab of an eel. <laughs> Smash fishing, baby. 
get in the water. This one definitely wasn't the monster that we seen yesterday. But this is still a fine old fish. The head on that is massive. And all I'm going to do to dehook it, I've got my knife in the sheath here. As you can see, it's hooked perfectly right in the snout. So I'm going to push it over like so, use the weight of the fish, and boom. It'll go off nicely, or she will, sorry. No harm done. What a beautiful animal. Massive conga. What an absolute beast. From the shore as well, on a hand line. And look at my hand. I've got lines in it all over. You can see it just chilling down there, making its way into the rocks. That is a beauty of a conga. And there's bigger down here. I've seen bigger. Woohoo! <laughs> Let's go get some more, baby. Day three is lucky. As you can see, guys, you see all the particles in the water. That's what you're looking for. It's best to mush the mackerel up. So then you get all of these particles coming through. I've already seen a smaller conger, about 10 pound. It swam around the edge here. So there's still more around. I wouldn't mind a smaller one to catch and cook. But at the moment, I really want that giant one that I seen. It was absolutely huge. I am absolutely caked in conger slime right now. Whew, I got well excited for that one. That was a pump. I literally got down here, put the chum out and uh, I literally squeezed it up and put the fresh bits in. And the conger literally just came from underneath me straight out. God, there was no weight with that one. Hopefully, that's a sign of things to come because I know there's a bigger one. It's quite funny. I've actually upped the size of my trace to 250 pounds. And I put a brand new hook on it today because I really didn't want to miss any bites. That's why I let that conger eat it a little bit before I struck into it. You can see there how chafed it is. And that's 250 pound line. Just goes to show what they can really get through these things when they start spinning on it. We've got Inglorious fishing with us, guys. There's a lobster. There's a keeper lobster down here. There's a small conger. We actually moved spot closer into a wall to see if we can find any big ones. Oh, he shot away. Yeah, as soon as they see you, mate, they're gone. But hopefully this will be productive. We probably won't catch the lobster, but if any big congers come out, we're in for a ride. <laughs> the lobster's going to my bait, guys. I'm going to have a crack at it. If it goes over the top of my hook, I may be able to hook him if I'm lucky. He's got it. Come on. Missed. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, yeah. There, he's got it. Oh, he's off. Oh, you he bugger. Bait. Ripped my bait off. That's what that big one was doing last night. He's going for it. He's going for it, guys. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Got him. Ah. <laughs> Another reel down. Ah, they like to fight. Woo! <laughs> Nearly went in. <laughs> nice. Woo! Battling the beast. Nice one. Battling the beast. Ah, that's a beast. <sighs> Whoa. There you go, boy. <laughs> That's not a bad one. That's not bad. Woo. That's like, that actually could be a catch and cooker, that one. Oh, I reckon, Jack. Watch you go, go down the hole. I don't want one too big, guys, because I don't want too much meat. Get it away from me. That one there could be the catch and cooker. I'd give that a £10. Yeah, it's a nice fish, that. Yeah, I'll give it about £10. Perfect eating size. Well, that's it. You'd yep. prefer a little bit bigger, but yep. I'll get some meat off that. Yeah, you don't want them too big. So there you go, guys. we got to catch and cook. Hopefully, yeah. his grandma comes out and I can hook her too. Yeah, boy. <laughs> so there we go, guys. We've knocked him on the head. That's about a 10, 10 11 pound conger, I reckon. Oh, she's a beauty. Something like that. Nice eating size, because what I want to do is uh, start smoking some fish in my new smoker that Sam got me. So we're going to have smoked conger and I'm going to fry a bit and see what the taste comparison is. But that one there is a perfect eater for me. What a beauty. We've got her in a bag and she's coming home. Sounds delicious, that. <laughs> smoked uh, conger. Happy days, eh? Yeah, lovely. Big shout out to Inglorious for holding the camera. No worries. It's a nightmare doing this alone. Yeah. <laughs> we're all packed up now, guys. We didn't see any more congers. Mr. Inglorious, yeah. thanks for popping along, mate. That's all right. Got it, I didn't catch that lobster. <laughs> <laughs> At least you tried, though, mate. That's yeah, the main yeah. thing. Yeah, we'll get them next time. Happy days. If you want to check his channel out, guys, like I say, I'll leave the link in the description. Thanks, guys. Highly recommended. Appreciate it. Let's Thank go you. cook some conga. Yeah, let's go. 
We're just going to weigh this conga, guys, just for uh, argument's sake to see what it is. It's quite heavy. It's not a bad one. What are you saying, then, guys? <laughs> what, what is she? What are you saying? 11? 11? Yeah. Up. 12? Up. 13? Up. 14? Yep, up. Maybe I'm underestimating my congas. 15? Up. 14, 15. Oh, yeah, look at that. Just under 15 pounds. Wow, so that one I caught was definitely over 30 pounds then. Yeah. Oh my That's god. I'm, I'm holding this one up, I'm going, this feels a little bit heavier than 10 pounds. <laughs> I'm underestimating 14, 14. How big was that monster then? Yeah, if I'm cool. underestimating them that much. Oh, oh well, there you go, guys. Just goes to show. Hold it up for us, guys. That's That's in Mr. Inglorious. There you go, guys. guys. That's about what, four and a half foot conga? Oh, well, hold up, I'm five foot ten. Uh, yeah. There you go. Five foot. Five foot. Foot, five foot, I'd say. Fifteen pounder or just Maybe under. Four now, five foot, yeah. Lovely job. So I've been underestimating my congas. I need to start weighing them. That's a big old conga. <laughs> We're back in the kitchen now guys. We've got quite a hefty old slab of conga here. So what we're going to do is we're not smoking it today because I've been to the shop and I can't find any coals for the barbecue. So a bit of a shame, but I've got another recipe I want to try. Just a few ingredients. In some tin foil, straight in the oven, job done. Smash. Look at that. Congress, that, that piece of conga is almost as big as you, mate. You didn't really know what to make of that, eh? That's a conga real bud. Yeah. Look at the white meat in that. Beautiful. What you've got is a nice big ring of meat in here. Tastes absolutely delicious. Very similar to lobster. So what I'm doing with the seal, I'm just cutting it up into steaks, about an inch thick is a good good old rounder. If you, like, if you go straight down to the backbone, turn it round and you can get a nice even cut. Beautiful. Go get that cut up. And there we have one lovely big conger steak. You can see how much meat in, is in there. There's quite a lot of bones in congers. But if you eat round these circular parts, then you uh, you avoid the bones a bit. But that's why you want a really big conga. Like 15 to 20 pound is a good all round size for, a, for an eel to eat. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't bother doing it with any, anything smaller really. It just wouldn't be worth it. that beautiful meat so what we're doing guys we've got some nice knobs of butter here i'm just going to put a couple of knobs of butter on each one as long as smash don't get them then we're going to do loads of sea salt straight over the top black pepper And this would just sweat inside the tin foil. That'd be nice and moist fish. And extremely tasty. And we need now, I've got some chili powder, some really hot stuff. Get that over the top. Nice spicy conga. Beautiful. These would be great on a grill as well. And all we got left, we've got a nice lemon. So there we go guys, we've got our lemon here. I'm just going to squeeze a good dose of that in there and just wrap them up into a nice pretty little parcel and that there goes straight in the oven. As simple as that, easy to cook. Give these about 25 minutes in the oven at about 180. That should be enough. Got ourselves a nice meal. That is looking absolutely delicious. Check that out. Nice and firm, delicious flavors, and loads of juice to dip it in. Conga, baby. It's been quite a while since I've eaten conga. And this one was well deserved after three days hunting them. I'm gonna go straight in for that big eyelet. Oh yeah. Look at that. Loads of 
loads of fresh white flesh there. It's very similar to lobster. The texture of uh, conga. Oh. Mmm. Oh, that's really spicy. Oh, that was hot. Congas have a layer of fat around them as well. And it tends to, when you oven cook them, it tends to like reduce into the meat a bit. So look at all that, oh, all of that flesh. There is tiny pin bones in some of it. So if you're squeamish with bones, I'd recommend just picking around it. But if you're not, they're not gonna hurt you. Mm. Such a firm meat. As you can see, it is pretty much like lobster tail. Oh, so spicy, burn my throat. <coughs> oh. It's got sort of a, it's got a very similar taste to a brown crab. Very similar, but it's got the texture of lobster. It is really strange. And I must say, these side pieces are my favourite. There is a lot less bones in these little side pieces where you've got the main part of the meat and then it comes around. That's the best bit, in my opinion. Mm. Absolutely delicious. You cannot beat fresh lobster. But you can't beat fresh conga like this. Not unless you have a, a red mullet, that is, but <laughs> but it's nice. As a one-off, now and again, cooking up a nice conga. Oh. It's so meaty. Mm. So I won't leave you any longer, guys. I'm going to finish off this my breakfast. It's now half, <coughs> half nine in the morning. You can see the bone structure there. It sort of goes in a freeway bit like that and then you've got more bones that come out to the side. So it does take a little bit of fiddling, hence the reason why you need a pretty big conga to eat because then it's, it's not so much faffing around, you know? Mmm. Oh, that's so good. So stay tuned for next episode. If you ever get a chance to find conga, even in the fishmongers, it will be very cheap. Definitely worth a go like this. It's simple, very effective, and absolutely delicious. If you want any merch, the link's in the description. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and the like button. It's Smash Fishing, baby. Woo!